So you want to be able to solve your cross in 2 seconds or less. Don't worry because you've come to the right place. In this video, I'll be sharing with you guys some tips on how to do just that. So if you're interested, let's hop into the video. Tip number one, always solve your cross on the bottom. Now when I was still a beginner at speed cubing and I decided to learn the advanced cross techniques, I heard this tip and I thought it was not very helpful because I was thinking like, how will I be able to see my cross pieces as I'm solving? But as I started doing the tip, I noticed that the tip was very good because of two reasons. The first reason is for easier look ahead into your F12. For example here, I have my cross solved like this. And if I had done this cross on top, I would have to rotate like this before I see this F12 pair already formed here. However, if I had done this cross on the bottom, when I finish my last move, maybe an hour prime like this, I'll see this pair forming and go into it right away. Tip number two, solve your cross to align later. The beginner's method taught us to align our cross pieces as we solve. For example, I see this red white edge, I align it with the red center, bring it down. Then I see the blue already aligned, I'll do this. Now we're to neglect all of this and find a method that will enable us to solve our cross faster. The way we can do this is just to look at the center pieces and solve our cross pieces relative to one another. For example, I have this case here and I want to solve these two pieces. So I see the orange white piece and I know that it can come down here by doing an R2. Then I see this green white piece and I want to bring it down here. How do I do this? I look at the center pieces. And I see that green center always comes to the left of red. So it means that this green can come down here to the left of red. So green to the left of red. <sighs> Why do I keep saying red? Oh, I, I think my subconscious is trying to tell you guys to click that red button. Yeah, the one with subscribe written on it. Thank you. But seriously, do I meant orange? Green is to the left of orange. So that when I align my cross like this, I will see that these two pieces are solved. Tip number three, deal with bad edges wisely. It is a common thought to classify our cross edges into two, good edges and bad edges. A good edge is an edge that can be inserted into the bottom layer, that's the cross layer, using only one move. So for example, this is a good edge because I can insert it here using R2, which is one move. Any edge on the top layer with the white sticker facing up is a good edge and it can be inserted using one move. Any edge in the middle layer is a good edge and can be inserted using one move. And finally, any edge in the bottom layer with the white sticker facing down is a good edge. So for example, this is a good edge. In contrast to that, a bad edge is an edge which cannot be solved with only one move. For example, this orange white edge is a bad edge and the only way I can solve this is to bring it to the middle layer and then insert it down to the cross layer. Now the major question becomes how do I deal with these bad edges wisely and there are many methods of doing this. The first and most common method of dealing with bad edges is to put it either on top or underneath a good edge. For example here this is a bad edge and I can put this on top of this green white edge which is a good edge. So as I insert this we can see that this is turned into a good edge and can now be inserted with one move. The same thing also applies here. This is a bad edge and this is a good edge. So I can solve this by putting it underneath this blue white edge which is a good edge so that as I insert the blue white, this will be turned into a good edge that I can insert like this. Sometimes you can run into a situation when all your cross edges are solved and you have one bad edge left to be inserted into its place. So what we can do here is to move the bad edge over to this side and then do this algorithm, R prime F R. So these three moves are not really much because they are very, very fast. So we can do it like this, R prime F R. Tip number four, use good finger tricks. So good is subjective because what is good for one person might not be good for another person but there are some basic concepts that are generally regarded as good for everybody now using good finger tricks makes the cross more fast and more fluid as a rule of thumbs we should not have more than two regrips in one cross solution so we should not be regripping all over the place we should just try to keep it to two or maximum three in some cases and also because we are solving our cross on the bottom now we'll have to be aligning our cross using d d prime or d2 as the case may be so therefore we should get these finger tricks ingrained into our fingers 
the fastest way to do d2 is by doing the d2 flick now you can either use pinky ring or ring pinky so personally i use pinky ring so you can just do it like this d2 flick we should also know how to do our regular d and d prime moves like this and then another d prime move we have to learn is the push d prime so this is done like this and how we do this is by using our ring finger to push on this sticker over here like this tip number five start your cross from a good angle we should always try to start our cross from the perfect angle for us and why we should do this is number one for easier finger tricking for example here i have these two cross pieces which i want to solve down here now probably the best angle for me to solve this cross is from this angle where i can do r2 f2 if i do it from this angle i have to deal with b moves which are not so nice and if i do it from this angle it just gets more awkward the second reason for starting your cross from a good angle is to influence your f2 pair but this is kind of an advanced technique and for now we should just focus on solving our cross from a good angle for better finger tricks tip number six plan out the entire cross during inspection the wca gives us 15 seconds of inspection time and we should try as much as possible to use this to our advantage to plan out our four cross pieces now advanced cubers plan their cross pieces and their first second or maybe even third f2 pair so we're talking like six to ten pieces planning is in inspection so therefore planning only four pieces will not be so much work for us also on average every cross can be solved with eight moves or less so that means we are planning like eight moves or less mostly during our inspection now planning the entire cross during inspection is not as hard as it sounds and it gets easier the more you practice tip number seven make deliberate efforts to improve yourself now this is the final and most important tip in this cross tutorial if you want to be solving your cross in two seconds or less you should always make sure you try to improve yourself you can do this by just practicing over and over again you can meet other cubers exchange ideas with them learn how they solve their cross also you can watch example solves from advanced cubers learn how they deal with their cross pieces and you end up being better in the long run and speaking of example cross solves i have an example cross solves video here so if you're interested you can click on this and it will take you right to the video thank you guys for watching this video remember to give it a thumbs up if you liked it subscribe to the channel if you're not already and i will see you guys later bye